If you've got bad credit but you still want to invest in real estate, then you're going to want to watch today's show. Bill Al, this one's for you. Let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey folks, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show here on Holton Wise TV. I'm your host, James Wise, and folks, this is a show where we work together one-on-one. -on -one. And, uh, you know, we help you, I help you rather, uh, me and my team rather, uh, help you grow, build, start your real estate portfolio. And I'm working with my man, Bill Al. Okay, Bill. You, Bill Al. I'm going to just call you Bill for short, brother. Bill, you are a nurse and a former Army medic living down in Kansas City, brother. And I said at the top of the show, if you have bad credit, you're going to want to watch the show. Uh, for the record, Bill, you do not have bad credit, brother. You have uh, pretty good credit, uh, but you do have a high debt-to-income ratio, okay? What that means is you make X amount of dollars, but you have X amount of debt uh, in relation to how much you make because you have, you know, personal property, student loans, car loans, things of that nature. So uh, I want to start with your first question to me, right? Because uh, we got to go over some things here before we even get to the property, okay? Now, you were asking me, like, what steps you could take, what you can do uh, to continue purchasing even though you have this high debt-to-income ratio because you, you're approved, pre-approved for an amount. It's, uh, it's on the lower end, but I do have one property that we're going to get into later on uh, that will work. But then after that, right? After that, you're probably going to hit a brick wall, and you're trying to figure out ways that you can continue to purchase. And one of the questions you had for me was, like, would quit claim deeds work? Uh, no, they would not. Th that's actually something kind of separate from this. Uh, they're, they're more or less unrelated, okay? Quit claim deeds make sense in certain situations, but in others, they don't. So the first thing I'd like you to do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the link to this in the show notes below. I want you to check out this video right here. Real estate deeds, quick claim, general, and limited warranty. Uh, that's a couple-year-old video. That's back when I had some hair. <laughs> uh, uh, ask James Wise number 10, okay? In this video, I explain to you uh, the differences of the types of deeds you can get, okay? So you definitely want to check that one out. And then after that, you need to check out this video because quick claims are actually very, very dangerous if utilized in the wrong way, okay? So right here, we just punched this one out in our Landlords from Hell series last month, all right? Three men caught stealing houses using a quick claim deed scam, Landlords from Hell episode six. So both of those are in the show notes below. Perhaps go ahead and just pause this video, Bill, and... Uh, just check those out, and then going forward, I'm going to assume everyone watching uh, understands what I'm talking about. So now going forward, you guys know that that's not the route we want to take here. We want to do something totally different. So let's just forget about quick claim deeds for now. Not going to be applicable for what you're trying to do. So another option for you, Bill is I would say seller financing. And I've actually got you covered on that, brother. Just go to HoltonWise.com, click the property search for sale tab, right? And then you got the various ways you guys could buy properties from us. You know, the investment properties for sale show, the MLS search and analysis show, which is where you're at. But down here at the bottom, all right, click here for MLS access. Pre-sorted inventory delivered to your inbox in real time. This is going to be gold for you, Bill. This is this is money for you, brother. This is what you want. Now, what this is, first of all, just these products, these real-time MLS feeds. I'm a real estate broker. You guys are getting my direct MLS access. See, a lot of folks, they look at real estate, uh, especially when you're not in the local market. You go to like Realtor.com, Zillow, Trulia, stuff like that. That's fine and good, but the issue with those websites is the data is slow and often uh, inaccurate, okay? Now, 
<clears throat> what this is, this skips that, okay? You get the information as soon as I get the information. You get direct access to my MLS, okay? So when Zillow or Truly or Realtor.com, they get information, it's aggregated directly from brokers like myself, directly from our MLS systems, and then it goes on that site. But it's like two, three, four days behind, right? And oftentimes inaccurate. This is in real time. So if a property pops up, listed by any of the other agents, over 5,000 agents in my MLS, the whole Northeast Ohio uh, market, anything pops up, boom, you'll get it instantly. So what I've done is I've sorted that out for you guys, right? We got A class, B class, C class, D class, F class neighborhoods, singles, doubles, commercial. I, I pre-sorted all that. You guys can check it out scrolling up and down. But for you, Bill, right here, I got the seller finance deals, and I've pre-sorted them in three different scenarios for you. Seller finance, single family properties, seller finance, multifamily properties, and then just scrolling down a little bit, we got the seller financed five unit apartment buildings. So based upon what you want, I would highly recommend you get these and then the moment, the moment anybody puts a deal out there that's got seller financing available, you will be the first guy to know about it, right? Because look, dude, seller financing, I'll be the first person to tell you guys, seller financing is great. I have literally, I don't know, dude, I probably pick up maybe like a million dollars of seller finance debt every single year. I utilize a lot of seller financing in my business. Now, I'm going to tell you this, though, right? I'm the CEO of Holton Wise. I have like 40,000 subscribers on Holton Wise TV on the YouTube, right? If you add in the other stuff like the Facebook, the Instagrams, my personal Instagram, all that jazz, right? All told, we have, I don't know, like probably like 125 to 150,000 subscribers, seven something million views on YouTube. So, will you be able to pick up as much debt as I can? Probably not, right? Uh, when you're doing owner finance deals, right? You have to demonstrate to the to the sellers that you know you have the ability to to repay them, right? It's not necessarily checking boxes off like when you're dealing with the bank. So I'm pretty much uh, the most well-known real estate investor in my market, right? So, uh, you know, sellers just reach out to me and, you know, I'm a known entity. So they're they're more than happy to do seller finance deals with me, right? They, they, they seek me out. I'm also spending, you know, six figures every single year marketing this business. I buy houses, you know, my whole business, right, and, and all our things. So when I, you know, I'm selling these feeds to you guys, and I'm telling you that I personally acquire a million dollars of seller finance debt, right? I'm not just trying to brag on my business right now. What I'm trying to explain to you is to set the proper expectations. I don't want you to think that when you buy these, there's just going to be millions and millions of dollars of loans just getting thrown at you. Not not going to be that easy. It's going to be a little bit harder for you. You're an unknown, right? You're a guy living in Kansas City. You're not a known entity in the Cleveland market. But there are still deals to be had, but they go quick, right? Because there's a lot of people. A lot more people want seller financing than sellers are willing to give it out. Are you a lender? If so, Holton Wise is looking to partner with you. If you're licensed in all 50 states, go to HoltonWise.com. Click the digital media tab to advertise on Holton Wise TV today. So that's why it's super important to get these feeds because you need to get the access to the data immediately. If you're waiting like three days for Zillow to pick it up, dude, it's probably already gone. So this is where I would start in regards to that, right? I would check that out because after me and you do one deal with your mortgage, you're going to be out, right? You're, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be done. So that is the move I'd want you to take. Other options are like hard money loans people talk about. And we do have hard money lenders. If you send an email to sales at HoltonWise.com, we'll get you our list of lenders. But I think that's a very dangerous strategy. I think you need long-term debt, low interest, long-term debt. You know, hard money loans are great if you're flipping houses and, and you're able to get that return quickly. But hard money loans do not work that well. Uh, for rental properties, right? Because you'll have the regular debt, the hard money debt, the interest is too high, the payments are too high. You're going to quickly go cash flow negative. And for a guy like you, you have a good paying job, right? You're currently a nurse, okay? So your job is good, but you have currently a decent chunk of debt. Instead of seeing you take on short-term 
high interest debt like hard money loans in an effort to obtain quick, uh, you know, scaling your rental property portfolio quickly, I would rather you perhaps do one deal with me with the good traditional financing, which again, we'll get into that shortly. Then look at the seller finance stuff, right? Get get a get a feel for the seller finance market. We'll make contact with a lot of these sellers, see if we can't work out some solid long-term debt for you. And then while all that's happening, pay off those loans, right? Pay off uh, the car loan, pay off the student loan to get that DTI down to a point where we could then qualify you for another traditional loan, right? So that's what I would do. That's, you know, we're going to hit it from three Three pillars, right? Number one, we're going to do a traditional finance deal. Number two, we're going to look into seller financing. Number three, we're going to pay down your debt to get more traditional financing open to us, right? That's that's what I want to see you do, brother. So with all that said, for uh, the first deal, the traditionally financed deal, what I did is I actually just looked at this property uh, for another client of mine, okay? And we have to try to get a lowball offer, but the price is so low, I think it makes sense. And it also makes a lot of sense because this is something that I think we're going to see some equity, but it's not going to occur right away. This is something that I think we can add some value down the road, which kind of falls into your plan, or at least the plan that I've laid out for you, where we work to pay down that debt and acquire more reserves and more money down the road. So I think this one might work out quite well for you for a first deal. So I'm going to have you take a look at that footage now. And you are hoping to be able to do a Burr deal. For those of you that are, are new to real estate and you've never heard the term Burr deal, you may have heard Burr strategy or Burr method. That is a B and four R's. What that stands for is buy. You want to buy a property. You want to renovate the property. You want to rent the property to a tenant. You want to refinance your money out of the property. And then the last one, the little pinky here, you want to repeat the process, right? This is a strategy that people uh, can utilize. I've utilized it myself, okay? It's part of what helped me get started into building such a large company, right? You're able to recycle the same money over and over and over again, right? So it could work good for a guy uh, like my man here, JP. You have very limited funds, right? You have $35,000. Now, I will tell you this. With your very, very limited funds, it's going to be it's going to be tough to do a pure bird deal. But I found you something that I like to call the slow motion burr or the delayed burr that could work for you because you said you could acquire a little bit more money if you really needed to and you're going to have more money down the road. So I thought that this particular deal would be perfect for what you have going on in your situation, brother. 7202 Clark Avenue, Cleveland, 44102. This is in the Clark uh, Fulton area, so to speak. It's not right there by Metro Health. Metro Health is in the Clark Fulton area, and that is a D-class neighborhood with your tiny budget, bro. We're only going to be able to get you D-class stuff, but this is my favorite D-class neighborhood because Metro Health, they are putting a billion dollars into their campus and the surrounding neighborhood. So if I'm going to bet on any neighborhood in the Cleveland area that is D-class to appreciate in the future, to have values go up in the future, to become the next Ohio City, Tremont, Detroit Shoreway, it's one of those type of areas, right? I'm going to think it's going to be over here in this general area, okay? We're not like right on it, but we're pretty close, right? So I, I, I think some of the good effects are going to hit us out here, right? If you're sick, this is the hospital you're going to, okay? 44,900 been listed for fucking ever. 503 days. Nobody wants this son bitch, right? It's got a tenant in there, okay? The tenant is paying too little. 550. That is way below what it should be, but that is why I think this deal could work for you, dude, okay? The tenant's paying 550. Market rent on this though is going to be $1,100. $1,100, 13,200 a year. The reason the rent's going to be so high, we're going to put a section 8 tenant in there in this property unlike the majority of the housing stock. This is a four bedroom, one bathroom home. So we're going to get those four bedroom voucher tenants, right? And you need to go section 8 
because in a D-class neighborhood like this, the risk of people not paying the rent is high. When they don't pay the rent, we got to evict them. That costs us money. Then people come in. They might damage the property, steal the, the, the piping, the hot water tanks. That's a big old problem, right? The idea is to collect rent. And if you're going to collect rent, you need a butt in the home, and that butt needs to have a rental income coming in, right? So let's guarantee that by the government to alleviate a lot of those risks, dog. So we do that. 11 hundo would come in. On average, 486 would go out, leaving you with an NOI, an average NOI of 614. But here's the deal. I don't even want you to worry about that just yet. Let's look at it right now. Are you a lender? If so, Holton Wise is looking to partner with you. If you're licensed in all 50 states, go to HoltonWise.com. Click the digital media tab to advertise on Holton Wise TV today. The tenant's paying $550, and your average expenses would only be $486. Okay, so that's going to leave you, what is that, $14? $64. dollars $64, this thing would cash flow for you right now, and you have $35K available. So I want to try to take this down for you at $35,000. It's been listed forever, 503 days at $44,900. The tenant is paying such a small amount of rent, basically – uh, half of what it's really worth. Other people are passing it by. So I think the fact that we're cash offers, I don't think this guy's getting a lot of traction on his particular property. You have a chance at taking it down at 35. And then I want you to do nothing. I don't want you to do a damn thing, dog. I want you to just save your money. It would cash flow, right? You'd be cash flowing an average of $64 a month. Continue to just save that. Let that build up in your bank account until you save up your other funds, right? We're just going to continue doing that till you eventually have enough money to renovate this. You don't want to kick the tenant out when you start getting to the point where you have enough money to renovate it. We could slowly increase their rent, okay? You're not just going to be like, yo, Mr. $550 tenant, you got to pay $1,100 now. <laughs> That's not going to work, right? They ain't going to have that kind of money. They're just going to move out. So we don't want that to happen happen prematurely because you don't have enough money to renovate the property, right? But if we could ride that tenant out, have you just go ahead and save that 64 bucks that's coming in on average, right? Continue to save that while you build up your reserves, build up the rest of your money. When we get a natural tenant turnover, that, my friend, is when we're going to do the big reno, and that's when we're going to go to do the refinance, right? Hence the slow motion refi or the delayed refi. I want to put $30,000 in this property. That's what I've set aside for the reno, 30 Gs. As far as the property goes, I don't have like a lot to go off of based on the listing, but I, I have a lot to go off of based on my knowledge, right? We just have this one shot of the outside in the front, and then in the back we got this, by the way, uh, you might not think this tells us a lot of information, but it actually does. It tells us a few things. Number one, uh, the tenant is a slob, right? This, this tenant is a, is a savage, okay? I could safely tell you this tenant is probably a horrible human being. They're probably a pain in the dick, right? Look at the fucking grass. These people don't cut their own grass, right? So they're probably lazy, nasty, gross slobs, okay? Second clue we have out here. The pool, that sucks. You don't want to have that. We're going to get rid of that as soon as humanly possible, right? Spend 500 bucks or so getting that motherfucker out of there. Pools are bad for landlords, guys. Your insurance provider does not want to see a pool in your tenant's backyard, dude. That can get you kicked off of your policy. Liability nightmare. So we're going to get this motherfucker out of there. Now, as far as the rest of the renovation... We could utilize these clues, right? Basically, this grass is telling me everything I need to know if I didn't already know it because of the neighborhood and because of the rental amount. This property is going to be gross inside, dude. It's going to be nasty. You're not going to get away with turning this over, putting a new Section 8 tenant in there when the time comes without a massive renovation. So of that $30,000 budget, $20,000 I know is going to go to our cosmetics. We're going to have to touch all the walls, all the floors. We're going to redo the kitchen and the bath. I could safely tell you with a home this size, I should be able to get all of that done for approximately $20,000, okay? 
We're going to do agreeable gray walls, white trim. If there's carpet, we'll pull that, refinish the hardwoods. We'll put new vinyl flooring in the kitchen and the bath, upgrade the fixtures in the kitchen, upgrade the fixtures in the bath, reglaze the tub. Approximately $20,000, depending on the type of fixtures we do, okay? And then after that, I have allocated $10,000 for us for what I like to call the Aw Fuck Fund. The Aw Fuck Fund. Now, the all fuck fund is incredibly important, brother, because there's other big things here, right? This is an old home. We have a roof. I don't exactly know how long is left on this roof. And remember, our goal is not to do this reno tomorrow, okay? Our goal is to do this reno when we get a natural turnover. Yes, I said that the tenant is probably a fucking slob. I said that the tenant is probably a fucking savage. Look at this. They don't even cut their fucking grass, okay? But, but... I am not saying remove that person, okay? It is what it is. There are a lot of dirty, savage people in the world, okay? Is our goal to buy properties and put people that take care of them like this in there? No, that is not our goal. But that doesn't mean if we could acquire a particular property that already has one, the first thing we need to do is kick them out. That's not what we want to do, right? It's an income stream coming in, not to mention at this moment, you do not necessarily have all the funds required to do the renovation. So, you know, you got to play the hand you were dealt, dog. And, you know, you kind of got a dirty tenant, but that's already baked into the cake, bro. It's not like the property doesn't need a $30,000 rental before you can get another tenant in there today. So what does it matter if the tenant's going to continue to be a dirty savage for another year, two, three, four years. What does it matter? They ain't going to do nothing, right? It's about 30 Gs today I want you to spend on it. It's still going to be about 30 Gs I'm going to want you to spend on it in four years if that's when we get the turnover, right? So collect the money Why it's here. Save up. Then we'll do that. 20 for the cosmetic. That 10 for the roof, right? Eventually, we're going to need a new roof, okay? Five to $7,000 is what that roof's going to cost. Furnace, if it comes to that, we may or may not need a furnace. That's $3,000. Hot water tank, that's about 1000 And then just any other things. Do I think we'll need a roof, a furnace, and a hot water tank? No, probably not. We're probably not going to need all three of those. But do I think we're going to not need any of the three? No, absolutely not. So that's why we're going to, you know, kind of understand that about 20 is going to go to the cosmetics and about 10 is going to go to other unforeseen and big things like that that I know are coming up, right? Because it's like clockwork, guys. Roofs, they only last 30 years. Every 30 years, you need a new roof. Hot water tanks, every 15 years, you got to replace them. Furnace, every 30 years, you got to replace them, right? So when investors are out there, they're buying these properties and, you know, they want to know, like, you know, if the furnace is new, right? And then a lot of times they get sellers like, oh, yeah, the furnace is good. What the fuck does good mean, dog? Good don't mean shit to me. What the fuck? Good? Of course the furnace, it's always good until the day it's not good. I need to know the, the life expectancy, right? A furnace can be two years old and it works, so it's good. A furnace can be 28 years old, it works, it's good. But in one of those scenarios, I probably have another 28 years before I need to fork over three grand. Whereas the other scenario, I probably only have two years. Roughly, give or take, guys. I, I, you know, every furnace is a little different, but that's, that's a generalized thing, right? So with this one... That's why we allocate 10K, right, knowing that that's going to come up in the near future. I wouldn't want you to do the refi before spending some money on some of these big ticket items because when you do the refi, I want you to maximize the value. I want you to have not just cosmetics in there. I want like a new roof or a new this or a new that to show the appraiser we put a lot of money into that. And if we do that, right, buy it for 35, which is my plan. Put the 30 into it. We're all in for 65. I think we'll get it to appraise for 70, and that's not counting for any future appreciation, I think. So maybe, you know, it takes you like six years before you end up doing this, and maybe we got a little appreciation. We rode the market a little bit. You get to appraise it for higher. I don't know, but a conservative estimate is 70K. If we do that, the bank will loan you back 52500 meaning you're going to end up with only 12500 of your own money in the deal. And since we got that Section 8 tenant and they're paying 11 hundo, that would be a 38% return on your money when you finally did the refi, right? So for all those reasons, I think this would be a great first deal for you. It just really works with what you're trying to do, right? So we could just take the money you have now, put it into a property, put that money to work for you while you save. Yes, the tenant is probably less than ideal, but hey, we're not, you know, we don't need to just remove this dude from his house, right? If he's paying his rent, 
He's pretty much already done the damage that he could do to that property. Let's collect that rent while you position yourself in a place to do this big old rental. And then when we do the rental, we'll knock it out, maximize that appraised price, get all your money, okay? And then move on to the next one, and then the next one, and then the next one. That, JP, is what I want to do on this deal for you. So reply to this private email. Let us know if that makes sense, if you want to move forward with this plan of attack. If not... Let me know what you don't like about the plan. And then when I make your next video, I will adjust accordingly and we'll go a different route, brother. Everybody else, if you're watching this show right now and you're like, damn, dude, this guy knows what he's talking about. Cleveland Market seems like it makes sense. I'm interested in working with him. I'd like to work with him one-on-one, -on -one, see what we can't do, see how much money we can make me. Go to HoltonWise.com, click the Property Search for Sale tab, click the MLS Search Analysis Show Order yourself a set of packages. I prefer the bigger packs, right? We sell three packs. We sell four packs. We sell 10 packs, but we also sell one property at a time. I think you guys are better doing the packs because we're trying to extract value. We're trying to essentially do lowball offers on some of these, right? Like this particular property, okay? I want my man JP to pick this thing up at 35 k but the seller is trying to get 44 9 right now. But I don't want JP to pay 44 9 I don't think because it wouldn't make sense, right? In my scenario, okay? We're going to get it to appraise at six, or 70K is the goal, right? With the renovation budget, we come in all in at 65K. If we had to pay what the seller wants, 45000 essentially, we would be all in at 75K for a property that appraised for 70. Well, that doesn't work, guys, right? These, this $10,000, it makes or breaks the deal, right? So that's why it's good to get the big packages because sometimes the sellers deny the deals and they just won't do it. Maybe this guy's just holding out. Maybe he's not getting desperate. Maybe it's been on the market for 503 days because he's like, no, I want 45 or everyone can go to hell. I, you know, it's, it, you can't t I can't tell you what a seller is going to do until we present them with the offer, okay? Until they have the offer in their hands. They might say, I'm firm on price, this or that, but you never really know what a seller is really going to do unless you position them with the money in hand, okay? All right, brother, welcome back. So let me know if you want to make a move on that particular property. If so, just reply uh, to this email, the private email we've sent you, and we will submit an offer on your behalf. If not, if that's not what you're feeling, dude, that's totally cool. Uh, send some feedback back to us, and we can readjust the strategy. Let me know what you think, man. I think the plan I set out, this three-step plan here, low cost property we will do the slow motion burr i think that might make some sense for you we'll attack sellers for seller financing and we'll pay down that uh debt to income ratio i think that makes the most sense for you right now but if you're thinking something else you're thinking something different dude let me know right you got a package of videos so this is very much going to be a back and forth scenario here where we work together to try to find you the exact right plan so just reply either telling me hey let's write this offer or hey i don't want to write the offer here's why here's what i want to focus on on the next video and then uh, you know give me a week or two i'll get you another video everybody else who's watching this show just so you know uh bill al and i we went over all this stuff months ago i do not send these uh videos out publicly on holton wise tv till the dust is settled till the deals are gone so this deal is no longer available, right? The previous client, the first guy that I originally uh, sent it to, I sent it to him privately, and he decided uh, to go a different route, so he no longer wanted that deal. So then I was able to send it to Bill Al. And then now, as you're watching this, you can safely assume this deal is long gone. Perhaps he took it down, perhaps he didn't. But now that it's available on Holton Wise TV, you know that it's no longer available. It's just out here for free for you guys to go ahead and learn. So if you want to actually be there in real time and actually have me work with you uh, to actually take down the deals for real, you just go to the property search for sale tab on HoltonWise.com, order some MLS search analysis packages, and we'll get started. But for now, if you're a first-time viewer, make sure you smash that subscribe button because Holton Wise TV is real estate investing made easy. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world.
U.S. REIB is a full-service turnkey provider offering investors the opportunity to purchase single-family and multifamily investment properties in Cincinnati, Ohio, Dayton, Ohio, and Kansas City, Missouri. The purchase process is seamless, from reserving a property to obtaining financing, inspections, and insurance referrals. U.S. REAP has a dedicated team in place to manage the process from start to finish. In addition, U.S. REAP is also directly integrated with its own private placement fund for accredited investors. The fund seeks to raise $10 million to capitalize on the repositioning of distressed single-family and multifamily real estate. Rent Tech Direct provides you with an easy-to-use yet robust platform for managing your properties, complete with its built-in reporting and accounting system that can be customized to fit your business. For property managers, you get advanced features like simplified owner distributions, automated management and placement fees, an owner portal, plus the software is certified for trust accounting. All this comes backed by the highest rated customer support team in the industry. Certified by third parties and ranked number one by our clients year over year, you get unlimited free access to our U.S.-based support team by phone, email, and chat, who will help you getting started or anywhere along the way. G'day everyone, it's Angela Ramora here, your favorite Australian and the founder and owner of Ohio Cashflow. Over the last five years, Ohio Cashflow has established itself as the most reputable turnkey real estate investment company in the country. We offer solid B-class properties in Toledo, Ohio. We work and live in the same areas that we sell in. So when we sell your property, your tenants become our neighbors. We only take on a handful of investors every month. So for your chance to work with one of the best in the business, please fill out our investor application form, which you can find in the video notes below. Thanks for listening. And as we say down under, I'll catch you later, mate. Is that it? Yeah, we're done. All right, cool. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content, including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.